Hi everyone. Today's video has three points and you're going to want to stick around for the third point because it's a secret as to the one thing you should definitely be doing if people are laughing at you when you tell them you want to write. So the topic that we're going to be hitting today is they laughed when you said you would write a book. Now this is something that happens all too often for many authors when you're first getting started. In fact, when you're getting started with anything. And your friends and family can sometimes be the worst when it comes to telling you things you can't accomplish or do. And when it comes to writing, there can be a number of reasons that they're telling you this. They care for you and they just don't want you to fail and feel that feeling of failure. And then they look and they think, well, you've never been very good at writing. Or the subjects you're interested in, nobody would want to read that. Your stories or self-help books or any of these sorts of things. Or maybe somebody's already written all of these books already, so there's really no reason for you to write this book because your story is really similar to somebody else's or maybe the tips that you have on puppy care or whatever it is are already been done. And so since somebody's already said it, there's just no need for you to rewrite the book. Or final reason might be that they say that you lack motivation, that you'll get started on this project and just like all of your other projects, you'll never finish. And by saying these things, they're inadvertently shutting down your entire creative process that's involved and the motivation necessary to actually get your book onto the market. And that is what we're going to discuss in today's video. This is Chris Baird from selfpublishingmadeeasynow.com, where self-publishing doesn't have to be so hard. Check out my free checklist below in the description to make sure that you're not skipping any of the secret steps necessary to get your book published and selling on the market. In addition, please hit the subscribe button so that you can help me reach more writers out there who are being laughed at to make sure they're aware that they actually can get their book on the market as well. This is a, the most use, powerful and useful way you can help me and return the favor to me when it comes to uh, helping me on this channel reach as many authors like yourself as possible. So that will never happen. And that was what I heard. But let me tell you a little bit because we're dealing with laughing or people doubting your ability. And I had a story of my own from my own past. When I grew up, I grew up in a family where all of my siblings were in the Air Force. They had all gone to the Air Force Academy in the United States, one of the three major service academies, uh, military service academies at any rate, in the, in the United States. And I also was thinking I would go along in the same uh, along the same things. I was in eighth grade and I had an economics teacher. And what did this teacher tell me? They told me when I said I wanted to go to the Air Force Academy, they said, there's no way you're going to get in. Functionally laughing at my idea. Because after all, you know, I had all sorts of issues. You know, I wasn't very good at, in studies. I wasn't very athletic. Uh, maybe I wasn't motivated. Uh, there was a whole series of things that were out of alignment in eighth grade. And so this person was putting a limiting value, a li trying to actually establishing a limiting mindset when it came to this whole thing. He was himself a retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, so he knew what he was talking about because after all, since you had, he had done it before himself, he knew what it was necessary in order for somebody to succeed or fail. And clearly, I was a failure in his mind. I would never succeed at this. So, I mean, I could think about it, but after all, he was going to do me a favor, right? He was going to be very helpful to me in informing me of what I could or couldn't do. And I would just say at the time, and this is a key issue here, he was right that the version of me in eighth grade really would never make it. If I had that version of me had, a, had a applied for the Air Force Academy, they would have probably laughed at me at that moment of time. And in fact, <clears throat> I had joined the track team in my junior high during that specific grade there. And I was the absolute worst runner on the team. But here's the thing, is that I went and showed up for practice every day and ran around the track. I would even get looped by people, people who would, would come all the way around and they would, they, would, uh, get a, they would lap me, which is unbelievably painful in, in that sense. And most people would completely give up. But the fact is, I kept doing that every single day. I kept sticking in it. But that version of me at that point clearly wouldn't have done it. And I wasn't so motivated in terms of studying and, and uh, applying myself and all of the things that would be necessary to get in. And so in this sense, this teacher was correct. And maybe, and just a quick side note, maybe with you that 
the version of you right now maybe isn't able to get a book on the market or things like that. And so you have these internal things and we're, but the, but the, the beauty of this situation is that as we're sitting in this, when we do apply ourselves and we want something enough and we're doing a route that is the, it's not an easy, easy route, but it is an easy route in terms of we breaking it down. We're breaking down. You want to get in there, well, then you need to get in shape. And that means you're going to need to be running every single day, for example, or writing every single day. And so by applying ourselves, the version of us that we are today may not succeed at this specific task. But what about the future version of us? Are we really frozen? And that was it. Six years later, that's six years after this point, I returned back to the very same junior high school and that was at my second year at the Air Force Academy. And so I had already reached my this two years in, and I thought maybe I would find this teacher, but I decided not to because in reality, we don't really, there is no need to go back and rub it in the fact that we, uh, when we're, uh, when we're st coming back to these points and you have these people around us, after all, they were just trying to be helpful with us and uh, uh, with coming to our school and trying to tell us what we can and can't do. And maybe they even have the experience because they know what it takes, right? They know what it takes. The, the, the thing they don't know, though, is what exactly is inside you? They don't really know what you have that's possible. Kind of like, in a sense, this little seed that's growing up inside of you, this idea of what you actually can achieve if you apply yourself. And sometimes it takes a little motivation. That's one of the things I think with like a YouTube channel like this one, uh, where we focus on some of the mindset that's necessary to succeed. We don't focus on who you are today and whether you're creative or whether you're able to write a lot or not. These are, these are secondary issues or whether you have the technical ability to put a book together. Rather, what we're focusing on is this idea of making small baby steps, applying ourselves on a daily basis in order to achieve. And the thing was is that Starting in that eighth grade, what happened was I immediately started getting in shape. So by the time I was in 10th grade, 11th grade, I was in way better shape. Now, I wasn't great. And by the time I took the running test to get in and push-ups and pull-ups and things, I was exactly on the line necessary to get in, right? So, and on academics, much better on that side of things where I began to understand of applying oneself in those areas. But but the, the eighth grade version was, and, and this is an important point that I really need you to take home, which is don't allow other people to put barriers and limitations on you when it comes to your goals. And for me, uh, and, and also when it comes to people who are telling you what they wish to be and become, don't tell them what they can and can't do. Encourage people and ask them, what are we doing on a daily basis to get there? So if a person says, I want to become a, I don't know, what it might be, a soccer player or something, a best in the world or whatever it would be, well, are they practicing every day? This is how we get there. Don't tell them, oh, well, based on your shape or based upon you know, how much you, you play, you'll never get there setting these limiting things and the words that come out of our mouth can shape and form what other people become and as opposed to encouraging other people to actually get there or and when people tell us that we're not able to achieve and accomplish these things well we need to learn to put that to the side and simply not allow their limiting mindsets that they're putting on us to impact us so they laughed when you said you would write a book. So the first point I want to hit, though, is, is that people think they know what you can and can't do. And this is completely ridiculous. Now, it is true that whatever you've done previously is probably a very good representation of what you're going to do in the future. And this means that you really need to focus on what you have done in the past. You may need to change your mindset of how you view yourself. I am a hard worker. I am somebody who can put in a certain amount of time. I can learn new skills. Like for example, when I teach you the absolute best tool, which is Juto for formatting your book and show you in my course how to put your book together, you might think I can't do that. That's too difficult for me. But the fact is we break it down. We show you how to do it and I interact with my students in order to explain exactly how you're going to do this and you can do this. So whereas some people would say, oh, somebody else needs to do it, or I need to get it done by traditional publishing, these limiting mindsets that no, you in fact can break it down and do it yourself. The second thing is people may not want you to succeed where they failed. This is a really hard one. And sometimes they will do, they will sabotage you specifically because you're trying to do something they themselves wish they could do, but clearly they never have taken the time to put in the effort themselves. And as long as you fail and they fail, they can convince themselves that the world's against them and that they're really just a victim. So when it comes to trying to achieve their goals on this matter. So this is something else that you really have to consider, which is maybe they don't want you to succeed. So 
this may be something that you you uh, have a little bit of difficulty uh, fully coming to grips with and I wouldn't really make the accusation because they may not be aware of it themselves they just be envious of what exactly you're achieving but the secret answer of the day is if you have an idea or a story you want to get into the world right you will find an audience so the, uh, and that's something that so many people don't understand is that the world is full of so many people and every day more people are getting phones and devices where they can read your books that you're coming out with. And if you have an idea, there's going to be people out there. And even if you're terrible at writing and even if your ideas are not original, the more you write, the better you will get at these skill sets. Your stories will get better and your, the, the advice that you're giving people is also going to be improving over time. And so as we move along in the process, and this is one reason why, and, and you know all of you out there who you are, I tell you, put your books on the market so that the market can tell you what they like or don't like. And remember, we're not saying that they're experts at being able to tell you what it is that you should fix on your book, but they can say, look, you have multiple readers who don't like something about your book. Get it on the market and let them tell you that so that you can see if you can fix it so that your readers will like it. Just like I can go to a restaurant and taste food that's gourmet food. I may not know it was too much oregano or maybe too little salt, it, but I can say I didn't really like the food. And if other people say the same thing, we can try to figure out what it is so that we can improve the quality of the food. So we get our things on the market and we get into this like the Toyota improvement cycle where they're continually coming back and telling us what it is we should improve on the books that we're coming out with and the stories that you're doing. Like if they say too many characters or the plot is too many twists, we can't follow it. These things can be useful. Maybe they are, they're correct in their diagnosis and maybe not, but they can at least tell you what they don't like. And that can be very useful information. But don't let it get you down. Just say, I'm going to improve for the next time. And the thing is, people won't be laughing at you when your book is being sold on Amazon and making sales. And that is the, the irony of the whole situation. It's that, I don't know if I'd say irony, but it is something along those lines where when you do get it onto the market, then suddenly where is all the laughing then? Because you actually did get it on the market. And then the best part is when you put your, your second and your third book on the market, the exact same thing happens again, where they suddenly will, uh, they, your books start to get better. You start to build an audience of loyal readers. And then it just starts to snowball from there in terms of the people who are reading your book and getting excited about what exactly you're doing and the laughter comes to an end then your friends and family they have to find somebody else they can laugh at and telling them that it's impossible for their dreams to come true with regards to their things and so you can prove them wrong and that feeling of knowing that you actually achieve that particular aspect of it is a very powerful one but don't allow the people in your life to get you down when it comes to these areas and sometimes they actually do care about you so you shouldn't think that it's just them wishing the worst for you sometimes they do wish the best for you. They're just trying to help you avoid the pain of failure. But it is in failing that we actually succeed in the long run. So that is important to remember. So do you feel the people around you are telling you what you can and can't do? If you feel these limiting mindsets and these people pushing and enforcing and telling you what's possible for you, write the word yes below in the comments. And if not, write no so I know where exactly you're coming because it's very important for me to know if this is a problem that you're facing when it comes to writing your books. And check up above me here for more video answers to your self-publishing questions. Thanks.